What's going on, everyone? We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I'm Brandy. And today on the top five, we will be talking about our top five TV to movie adaptations. Yep. Spinoffs, continuations. Being in a series just isn't enough. They need to have their own feature film. Yes. Uh, we were thinking about this because 21 Jump Street is coming out, and mm -hmm. apparently it might actually be sort of good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope so. Let's see what happens. All right. So, um, did you want to start off with me? Why don't you go? Okay. So, my number five TV adaptation is an animated film that came out in 2007, and it's The Simpsons. Granted, The Simpsons movie should have came out 10, 15, <laughs> 20 years ago, but... It's pretty good, though. It, it's pretty good. I had a really good time with it. Um, I mean, you can say now The Simpsons, the TV show, has pretty much fallen off the tracks. That Every episode is pretty much hit or miss, with miss being the majority of the recent episodes, but I think this one was really enjoyable. It was really funny. Um, you gotta love freaking Harry Plopper and Spider Pig and all that stuff, and I mean, it's just... It's typical Simpsons the way you want Simpsons to be. It's just classic, the Homer, Bard, everyone, um, and that just crazy adventure with Homer like freaking polluting uh, the the town and Homer freaking... went on a crazy adventure. I'm shocked. I know, right? I just say that when Spider Pig was a big joke, I really was like, "Am I missing something? Why is this so funny?" And it's I so funny because it's quite, so stupid and silly. I don't silly, quite I mean... get the Spider Pig thing, but uh, if you do, then great. Because it seems to know. bring Calm a lot down, of joy man. to a lot of people. It brought me joy. <laughs> spider Pig, Spider Pig <laughs> does whatever a Spider Pig. Does. Okay. Uh, slightly more serious. My number <laughs> five. Uh, solid film. One of those ones you always watch when it comes on cable. The Fugitive. Let's talk about The Fugitive. It's my number four. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dr. Richard Kimmel. Yes. Um, I'm a sucker for basically any movie where there has to be a scene where someone like quickly changes their identity in mm -hmm. a bathroom. <laughs> like, they have to change their hair, they have to change everything else. I love We're on the Run movies. Oh, yeah, with and like, this someone like, being cha like chasing after you. Yeah, you don't like know what the, the hell's going stuff, on. The stuff, all of that. Freaking, like, it's like North by Northwest. You've got the wrong much. man. I love exactly. You've Got the Wrong Man movies. <laughs> So, it's like Hitchcock. It's great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty into The Fugitive. And then, of course, you know, you've got the great Tommy Lee Jones Tommy Lee Jones, yes, well. the Oscar-winning performance. You have Harrison Ford, obviously, one of the great good guys in all of films. Um, other uh, cameos, well, not cameos, but other people showing up, Julianne Moore, uh, Joe Pantoliano. It's just a totally fun movie. So Yeah, it's, it's just like a really solid, well-done crime movie with performances that elevate it to the being something was great. a little bit special. The, su the suspense was awesome. It holds up, I think. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the man with the one arm is freaking crazy, dude. And mm -hmm. the train sequence, I kind of want to watch that movie right now, dude. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's awesome. Sweet. So. All right, well, that was your number four. Now I'll move to my number four. Okay. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, if I've had a reason to, but I'm one of the biggest Beavis and Butthead fans ah. you'll ever meet. Beavis and Butthead do America. I think it's hilarious. Let me just tell you, my roommate has known me for since I was like 16. And when they brought back Beavis and Butthead this last year, which is basically the best thing to happen to me in 2011, yes, she <laughs> saw me watching an episode of it, had never seen this before, and was stunned mm -hmm. by how much I was enjoying myself. <laughs> really. <laughs> They're so funny. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I really think, you know, I'm a fan of most of Mike Judge's work mm -hmm. anyway, and I just, I freaking love Beavis and Butthead, and I thought that the movie was actually like, a really solid entry, basically just like a super sized, really mm -hmm. great episode. They Absolutely. go on an adventure. I and I think it's quite funny still. Oh yeah, and I mean the the reboot, it's kind of amazing because I caught a few episodes and it's like it's like they never like missed a step. Oh, you know? it's, it's great. Like Except for now they're making fun of Jersey fun, Shore, like, which yeah, like, like pop honestly, culture stuff and the two of them making fun of Jersey Shore is like my idea of heaven. It's so pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's move on to my number three. Uh, my number three TV adaptation. Um, I have to admit, I was not aware that this was uh, a TV show until I actually looked it up mm -hmm. for this list. Uh, it's from 1987, and it is The Untouchables. Ah, yes. Brian De Palma. I thought about this one. It gets into that shady area people like to argue about where it's like, 
not really a remake. They just have the same source material, mm -hmm. but I think it counts. it counts. I almost put it, it on my list. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, you have Brian De Palma, arguably one of his best films. Uh, Kevin Costner as Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness, probably one of the coolest names um, in friggin... Coolest dudes. Cool, just coolest awesome. three-piece suit. Exactly. Sean Connery in his Oscar-winning role. Andy Garcia. And of course, you have Robert De Niro putting on the pounds to play Al Capone. <laughs> it's just a really cool, like, you know, good guys versus bad guys. Mm -hmm. In um, Prohibition, it's you have gangsters, you have guns, you have the fedoras. It's, it's pretty... It's awesome, so... I'm behind most things where fedoras are involved. If you have a fedora in your film, you, you're already cool with us. <laughs> Not right? now, in the past. <laughs> well, Not if you're yeah. showing up at the BET Awards and the <laughs> Grammys wearing like a fluorescent fedora. Not that. But okay. in the back in the day. Yeah. Or period pieces. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Send your hate mail to me about your fedora. Um, <laughs> I think you've worn one on top five before. <laughs> All right. Just offending everyone. Equal opportunity offender today. Okay, number three. <laughs> We've talked about this movie before. We love Just Whedon, Cernity. Mm, um, yes. I don't remember what category we were talking about when I talked about this movie before, but I, I think it's, it's just it's like... It's popped up a few times. It is, yeah. It's so solid. It's such a solid like adventure movie with this cast of characters who mm -hmm. are endlessly entertaining. Um, does a great job of wrapping up the threads of this uh, TV series while mm -hmm. still sort of leaving things open if they I mean they're never going to return whatever but com in comic books or whatever they can go back and right. and deal with the stuff I'm if you don't like Joss Whedon, I really don't understand you. So <laughs> right, that's pretty much that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah, let's uh let's talk about Serenity a little bit more because it's my number two pick. Oh, um, okay. We're, so we got some synergy going today. Yes, we today. are. Yes, we are. Um, I made the mistake of watching Serenity before watching Firefly. So when I was watching Serenity for the first time, I'm like, what's going on here? There's a lot of things that I don't understand. Yeah. There's a lot of like relationships and like backstory that I'm not really getting uh, mm -hmm. it's not coming across um recently finished uh firefly and now Ooh. it's just the holes are filled i totally get it now <laughs> i appreciate serenity way more it's just it's so cool dude i mean freaking west a western in space mm -hmm. you have badass chicks and you have badass dudes like freaking going around like killing people it's awesome i don't i don't understand like how you cannot like it you know i don't get it either. <laughs> yeah so uh yeah that's it that's all right it. Um, so then my number two, um, I'm using this as kind of a placeholder for a whole franchise because it's so mm. hard to pick, mm -hmm. but at number two, I put the Muppet movie. Ah. Um, I do love the original Muppet show. Mm -hmm. I've watched a bunch of those now that you can get them on DVD and, you know, I saw them on various rerun type things when I was a kid. Um, and then I'm glad that the tradition of movies has stayed. I actually think that most of the entries are really solid, even the ones that have not been big hits. Shout out to Heidi for Muppets in Space. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Muppet movie is the one that really, like, started it all, and I'm so happy that that transitioned well to the theater so that we can keep having it, because I don't, I'm, I... Sadly, I wish I could just flip on the TV every week and see the Muppet Show. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they should have gotten the Muppets to replace Jay Leno or whatever. But that. <laughs> but we still have the films, and um, I'm really happy that the that the new film was uh, pretty much a hit. Yeah, so. I mean, I I freaking love the Muppets. It's it's amazing how these freaking like hand puppets can cause so much like love and entertainment amongst its audiences. So much joy. Um, I mean, even Muppet Babies, I totally dug. So. <laughs> When I was a kid, I watched a fair amount of Muppet Babies, yeah. So. All right. So uh, let's move on to my number one. Um, kind of like the Muppets, I couldn't really uh, settle on a single film, but a complete franchise. Um, my number one TV adaptation is pretty much all the Star Trek movies. Nice. Um, like, yeah, when I was going through the list, I was like, does Wrath of Khan really, like, inhabit everything? Like, the original series, <laughs> Next Generation, Deep Space Nine? Uh, I mean, what about, you know, J.J. Abrams' uh, reboot? I mean, does that take everything I almost thought about putting else? the reboot on here because I'm a pretty big Trekkie for the shows, at least definitely for the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Mm -hmm. and, but the J.J. Abrams remake got me super into, like, more of the original series, which I had not given it much of a chance i mean there's just like and, it goes yeah. in so many places and there's so many high points in different 
series, different cast of characters, it's really hard to pick and one thing to highlight. what's great is that even though it is kind of a reboot and reimagining, it definitely calls back to the original series with Spock and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, uh, just that brand, the Star Trek brand is so huge in popular culture. I mean, you have Star Wars and Star Trek like right there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Star Trek, obviously, I had to put it in. Good, I'm glad you did. All right, my number one. I will not apologize for thinking that this film is basically a masterpiece, and that is Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> I love Pee-wee, okay? Yeah. I was so into it as a kid. I had all the action figures. I had, like, little Pee-wee. <laughs> like, I had all of them, right? Sweet. And the movie just gets funnier every time I watch it. Like, I always go back to it every couple years, and it holds up so well, so quotable. Mm -hmm. I mean... Tell them Large Marge sent you like that's like <laughs> Large Marge man. You know, <laughs> Just, any kid that has seen that movie, first yeah. thing they think of is Large Marge. Dude. <laughs> I mean, it's so because it's like so. It's just just blah, blah, like right in your face. I don't. I, I don't really have anything like super intelligent even to say about Pee Wee except for that it's just it's wacky as hell. The jokes hold up. It's balls out performances. Like I really think that that. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is such a fun play on the sort of road trip movie, mm -hmm. and I love it. They need to like sort of bring Pee Wee back. I mean, have you seen Pee Wee recently, like on stage? The dude has not aged. <sighs> he was he on an exactly episode like of like Top was. Chef like three weeks ago. It was really random. <laughs> he looks exactly like he did back in the day. It's crazy. They need to like <laughs> scoop him back up and make another movie, man. All right, well. That does it for our top five TV adaptations. Um, if there's any out there uh, that you'd like to mention, please let it be known at mcguffinpodcast.com. And we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.